Hello, everyone. Today, we are joined by Dr. Ibtisam al -Bestaki. Dr. Is Ibtisam is a director at the Dubai Health Authority. She has 21 years of experience in the healthcare sector and has worked in some of the leading establishments in the region. Her previous experience also includes working with the Prime Minister's office as the head of health strategy. And she was also part of the team which created healthcare facilities for the Dubai International Airport. Dr. Ibtisam graduated with a bachelor's degree in medicine and surgery from the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. She then went on to get her master's degree in health management from the Royal College of Surgeons in London. She is also certified in aviation medicine. Dr. Ibtisam, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you uh, this afternoon, and uh, I hope we could have a really nice discussions and maybe a lot of people can learn uh, from um, my experience, and uh, especially in the healthcare sector. Thank you. Absolutely. I mean, mashallah, you've had a fantastic career. You've been here. You've been at the forefront of driving a lot of healthcare change, not only, frankly, during the pandemic, but also before that. So tell us a yeah. little bit about your journey and tell us, um, you know, how you got to where you are today. Well, uh, I come from a very um, nice size family. I was the second child and um, um, very... Uh, you could say determined child when I was a young and then uh, I got a scholarship uh, from the, uh, the UAE government uh, so I could continue my, my MBBS in Royal College of Surgeon in Dublin, Ireland and then I came back uh, with um, you know uh, different kind of uh, education so wanted to practice medicine uh, so um, uh, then I, I actually worked between the uh, public sectors in a various field until I gained my postgraduate of family medicine um, in, uh, in Dubai. And then I went and I specialized even in aviation medicine. And at the time when I was uh, being part of the Dubai airport uh, management team, uh, trying to establish the Terminal 3. So I was very much interested to understand how the management work. So I yeah. did my master degree in, um, in, in healthcare management, and I gained it as well from Royal College of Surgeons. And then um, after that, I've been enrolled in so many leadership programs. So, and this had given me like 10 years experience, hands-on patient understanding, the patient's requirement, needs, and their, their pains, the difficulties, their, their, the, the various kinds of disease, because I was between hospitals and the clinic. And then I had another like 10 to 11 years uh, experience in the management. And my management was from the uh, operation perspective uh, in the airport and managing the clinic and the health system, as well as the, uh, the whole um, uh, operational um, handling of passengers and the patients till yeah. I reached to the strategic uh, level where I was um, um, managing the whole um, UAE strategy in the healthcare at the prime minister office. And then, of course, I have moved to different role because I wanted to learn. So learning for me, it was very, very important. And that's the reason I have moved to the private sector for four years and I gain a lot of experience from there. So today uh, I reach as a director of invest investment because I have invested in myself for almost like 20 years from studying working experience and moving from public to the private sector. That's fantastic to hear. In fact, I think when you talk about your journey from the public to the private and then to the public sector, I think you highlight a lot of the changes that uh, embody what happened in our region, in our country a few years ago, which was really and truly to bring a private sector mindset into the public sector. Given that you lived this change firsthand, what was that like and what were some of the key learnings from that? Okay, it's it wasn't easy, honestly speaking, because you know, uh, you're if once you uh, the reason. Let me just say the reason that I went to the private sector for uh, for four years to gain those experience to understand how basically they function, they work, and what's the challenges. And I found 
that the, the, the speed and the amount and the way they've been uh, functioning was a bit different than what the public sector they do. And plus, they had um, a, a different uh, objectives um, in, their, in their organizations. So when I move back to the public sector, so I would really wanted to see such a, a dynamic kind of an environment. And plus, um, uh, bringing those objectives towards the public sector as well. So we need to become more like a target driven. We have to focus on the financial matters. We need to have the customer satisfaction on the top of our goal. So especially in healthcare, when you're talking about healthcare, patient is your center. You, that's your pay of your, your attention. So um, these kind of things was quite challenging uh, coming uh, to the public sector. But however, uh, with, the, with the various example, bringing the right people and Honestly, there are uh, people in the public sector who love to change uh, to the better and more efficient and effective organization. So, uh, um, so it was not easy. And then uh, what supported me even a lot when I was implementing my projects, uh, when law number uh, 22 year of 2015, which was the public-private partnership law and guidelines was issued in the Emirates of Dubai, that basically really helped me to bring the private partnership to the public sector. So we start like slowly to change the culture and to, to allow the public sector even to accept those kind of a partnership. And here was kind of like a, a point change where the people started to work together and how basically that kind of a mindset and the blend can happen between the public and the private sector. So as I say, it's not easy. You really need a strong legislation. And plus, you really need to have uh, a good uh, leadership can, uh, can lead uh, the organization towards the private mindset where the objective is your customer first. Secondly, you need to work on efficiency of the services and operation. And thirdly, the financial does matter because that's a rewarding part. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's not an easy change, as you said. It's, uh, it takes yeah. time, it takes effort. In fact, I think one of the things that we've done tremendously well is support changes in this part of the world. Lots of different kinds exactly. of changes. Absolutely. I, I think one of the changes that uh, we've seen in the last 10 years, in addition to this, is also the empowerment of women and the exactly. way women are, the, exactly the way women are cultivated and the way their paths are are uh, are uh, facilitated in many many ways again you've lived through this journey and uh, you've experienced the many many ways in which the, we are unique in the way women are empowered through the organizations perhaps you can share some of those uh, experiences with us yeah I I feel um, a woman has a great role um, uh, in, in, the, in the society, in the community, as well as in the organization. And uh, because we as a woman, we look at things quite differently, um, um, especially when it comes to certain areas. Healthcare, if you look at it, most of the nurses are women. And um, we have a lot of women, even physicians. So it's kind of like um, um, being as a woman, it's a, it's a kind of like a blessing. The other thing, UAE government has always supported women. I mean, I, I shared with you my, my, my experience in terms of traveling abroad. I was one of the, the girls who been sent abroad by the, by the government who got the scholarship so I can basically obtain my degree. So uh, that kind of uh, empowerment that the UAE government has given to us from the founder, Allah Yerham Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan, uh, until uh, our existing leader, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, as well as Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed. So there's, I mean, they are the ones who always empowered women in every single organization, not just in healthcare sector, but look at it from education, look at it from innovations, look at it even uh, from military perspective. And if you look even, Previously, you can see that we had 
uh, woman minister existing in UAE cabinet. And that was like almost 20 years back. So, um, so, so what about now? Now you can see even young leaders, young women that are leading a good organization with a great impact for the future. So I feel like women has an important uh, uh, kind of like um, uh, impact in the, in the society and the community. And having that kind of a gender ba- balance, it's a very, very essential. So uh, it will give um, a plus point to every single uh, processes that w- we are leading to it. And I think like this being led by Her Highness Sheikha Manal bin Mohammed bin Rashid al Maktoum, where the UAE has achieved a great role in terms of a gender balance between men and women. Absolutely. I mean, I couldn't agree more. There's still a long way to go, but the leaps and bounds exactly. that we've made in the last years are something to be celebrated. Absolutely. Look, one of the other things that we have certainly been facing, and I think will define our generation in many ways and, and many other generations, is the pandemic. It's now we're, we're for all practical purposes in the second year of the pandemic, and we know that we still have some challenges ahead. You, in your role, have been very much at, been at the forefront of handling this and managing this. And uh, frankly, the way the country has handled this has been quite exemplary. What are perhaps some of the you know lessons that are, that you've learned, or some of the experiences that you can share with us? Um, to be honest, um, we are blessed being in UAE. Um, first of all, uh, UAE government. Um, once the pandemic happened, let's consider it. It's a massive event happened in the world that worlds need to react. And the way UAE has reacted tremendously, something like it should be an example across the world. First of all, we had a budget, like, you know, it's, it's it, just to secure people's health. Um, if you can recall, we had many of field hospitals open between Abu Dhabi, Dubai, and other Emirates. We had more than 13 PCR drive-through uh, tests, uh, all being funded by the by the government. We had, we never run out of ventilator, or we never run out of any kind of a hospitals admissions, and that's because we were blessed of having not just public hospital, public and private hospitals, because of the great support that the government gave to the private uh, sectors. They actually was giving it back to the public sector and having a hand joints together to come up with an important way of the best operational to help the populations. Mm. And plus, if you look that Emirates of Dubai itself has announced a new stimulus package worth for around 300 million dirhams. And at its own fifth, it reached to 7 billion, billion dirhams. So at the first uh, kind of like a package. So um, you can imagine how the resilience and the generosity was given just to contain that kind of a pandemic. And plus, now if you look at the vaccinations, uh, UAE, I mean, did a really marvelous job in vaccinated um, sing- every single populations and advocate and, uh, and, you know, and as well, they try to um, increase the awareness program among the population. And I think by now we almost reached 6 million people has been vaccinated in this country, which is really, really good. We need few millions and we will definitely will, uh, will, will, will create kind of an herd of immunity among ourselves, which will be uh, a great um, you know, impact. Um, we shouldn't forget the lessons that we learned from the pandemic that we always should be prepared for any um, such an event. It might take another one or two years so we can recover it properly, but uh, we will definitely will go back to our new norm that some industries been hit by the, uh, by the, by the COVID-19 but it has created a different uh, jobs. So let's talk about like, or uh, focus on the the benefits that we got out of the COVID-19 because some of area have boomed like anything, especially like e-commerce, 
like um, digital uh, companies and digital healthcare, as well as the uh, healthcare industry and other industries as well. Absolutely. No, makes perfect sense. So I think there will be a lot of change across many different areas, right? Different economy, I think the society, everything. They will, we're just beginning to scratch the surface of this. And this will fundamentally yeah. change the way we've done things in so many ways. In fact, I know healthcare and the impact that this has had and will have on healthcare is an area that you are very close to. So in, in your view, what are perhaps uh, some of the key changes that this pandemic will end up driving in the healthcare sector? Um, I think there will be definitely um, a new way of practicing medicine. I mean, we used to do a lot of counseling consultations. So those kind of a part will turn uh, to digital kind of a healthcare digital counseling, digital consultations, uh, with all security and safety of the patients uh, taking into uh, uh, place. Uh, the other thing um, being during the pandemic, now it is the time that UAE is focusing pretty much on research and looking at the various field as well, like uh, precession medicine, genetics. Uh, Abu Dhabi has set up a G42, so uh, we do have in Dubai, like Jalil Foundations, doing a great job in terms of the research. So it's, it's kind of like uh, there's a lot of, um, uh, I would say, uh, a lot of work needs to be done because of the COVID-19. Uh, the whole in the healthcare industry will reshape. Tomorrow, you will not require huge hospitals. You might require more kind of a precise, uh, hospitals or centers that just cater a certain area in healthcare. A lot of services can be done even remotely in some areas, in some fields as well. So things will reshape in different way. And as well, this will make even our um, new generations, when they are coming and they are looking at the healthcare field, to sub-specialize in the fields that really required to tackle those diseases, as well as the um, uh, problems related to human health being uh, to create, a, you could say, a perfect well-being um, scenarios within the community. Very nice. Absolutely. Makes a lot of sense. So with everything that's going on, Dr. Etesam, with your day job, with, your, with handling the COVID and the pandemic, and with having two beautiful children, how do you manage it all? How do you balance it? And, and what motivates you to keep doing what you're doing? Okay, um, well, it's um, what's motivate me, it's uh, because I'm being uh, blessed um, being part of uh, UAE. The other thing, it's uh, there is always, uh, I mean, it's not easy to balance between family and work, but always, I always advise even my my colleagues, my friends, my younger friends, that they really need to give their times to their family. It's very, very important. And they really need to balance between their work and their family uh, by dedicating their times and, um, you know, uh, between, and between the both. It's not easy as well, working mother and especially leading some difficult positions. It's, it's not very easy but it is very important how to manage your time. Um, and I always say um, to everyone, um, keep yourself as a front. You really need to take care of yourself so you can take care of your work and your kids. So that's very important. So you need to balance between your health, your food, your exercise, your kids and family, your work. And what motivates me a lot in my work is basically challenging projects. If I have any challenging projects or projects really looking for a solution, I love doing that. So that's basically what motivates me a lot. Fantastic. What advice would you give to some of the younger women and men that are just starting out their careers? Well, uh, I always tell them, have a dream and follow your dream. 
and not just follow your dream, basically enjoy every step what you're trying to do, because it's very important. A lot of people, they say, I want to become a doctor. Okay, but you enjoy the step, enjoy each single process that you are doing to reach to that position. But, and um, similarly, when you want to reach or achieve any of your dream, just dream, have your dream to become true. And believe me, you, you will. Because when I was a child, I was dreaming to become a, a physician. And I wanted always to help people by any means, whether I'm at the admin job or at the physician job. And honestly, I have achieved it somehow. This is what I would say. Very nice. Well, thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today, Dr. Ibtisam. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure and hope to see you again in a, in a, in a better situations and hopefully in a, in a situation that we don't need to wear masks anymore. <laughs> Indeed. Inshallah. Look forward to that. <laughs> Inshallah.